Hello guys, this is Dr. Asif Nawaz. Uh, welcome to my channel, uh, Medical Tutorial BD and, and Surgical Classroom. So as you know, this is the last and part three part of the MRC study with me physiology portion. So welcome to welcome back to my videos uh, once again. So in the previous video where I already discussed about some uh, to important topics uh, regarding physiology of MRC's part A. It's not only MRC's part A, it also gives you some importance or advantages in the MRC's part B also. So almost, uh, so today we will discuss about the uh, some portions of respiratory physiology, renal, GIT and, uh, and others. Though what is important and that is enough from uh, this source, uh, if you uh, if you study hard by uh, by repeated studying it, maybe uh, this knowledge will help you to understand the question pattern. Okay, so let's continue our uh, today's video. That is oxygen transport. Almost all oxygen is transported within the erythrocytes. Okay. So, okay, it is limited solubility one percent of carried solution. So, must remember that the oxygen is transported within erythrocytes, okay, and which is depending on the hemoglobin concentration is degree of saturation, okay. So, if uh, here the uh, important things is if the level of hemoglobin is reduced, in that case, oxygen killing capacity of the blood will be also will be reduced as well. That is why. Uh, the most um, important fundamental uh, categories or marking of saturation is hemoglobin okay not pulse oximetry because it is not reliable now the hemoglobin globular protein composed of four subunit hem consists of porphyrin ring uh, containing iron atom and its ferrous state okay the iron can form two different hands one with oxygen and another with polypep peptide chain. There are two alphas and two beta subunits of polypeptide chain and all together the globin. Globin is a plasma protein cannot bind with oxygen but is able to bind with carbon dioxide. So, globin can bind with carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions and beta chain are ab able to bind to 3 diphosphoglycerate that is DPG. The oxygenation of ox, uh, hemoglobin is a reversible reaction. The molecular shape of hemoglobin is such as binding of one oxygen molecule facilitates the binding of substrate molecules. Okay. So, it is the fundamentals of hemoglobin that is we all that two alpha and beta chain beta subunit has some advantages with 2, 3 DPG and the um, globin chain can bind with carbon dioxide not hydro oxygen. Uh, like hydrogen, it also bind carbon dioxide and hydrogen, not oxygen. So you have to understand this oxygen hemoglobin dissociation cup. This is towards the left, and this is the normal parameters, uh, and the curve goes to right, and the curve goes to left. So in which condition curve can go to left or right? It is must be remembered. Like. Let us see what it is. The oxygen dissociation curve describes the relationship between percentage of saturated hemoglobin and the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood, but it is not affected by the hemoglobin concentration. That means oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve cannot be changed with the hemoglobin concentration. Okay. This is the only matter of saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen that is partially or complete. Chronic anemia causes 2, 3 DPG level increases, hence the shifting curve to right. So, oh, whatever it takes, you have to know some parameters in which condition the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve can go to right or left. Okay? There are some diagrams. So, uh, let me think, yes, focus here shift to left and shift to right. In which condition goes to shift that is low hydrogen ion that means acidosis, low partial pressure of carbon dioxide, low uh, 2, 3 dpg diphosphoglycerate, low temperature 
and the hemoglobin fetal hemoglobin meth hemoglobin and the carboxy hemoglobin so these are the condition where the shift goes to left okay and the uh, shift to right that is raised oxygen delivery it means the lower oxygen delivery because when the carb goes to left in that case this is the alkalosis carb and this is the acidosis carb marked by red color okay so that means the oxygen mainly increased in the lung level that is lung and capillary in between there that is this curve is more prominent in the lung capillaries and the here this line denotes that hemoglobin is released from the uh, RBC and goes to the cell that is cellular level. So raised oxygen delivery that means uh, this is the tissue level where the hemoglobin concentration is uh, not mandatory but hemoglobin releases oxygen in the tissue level that cause that that is why oxygen level is raised that is raised hydrogen that is acidic raised partial pressure of carbon dioxide raised 2 3 dpg and the raised temperature okay now the lung volume this is the fundamental things you all you all already discussed is in the mdbs that is what is tidal volume what are the amount of the type tidal volume and uh, the in the female has slightly less than the male inspiratory reserve volume the amount of air that we inspired in forcefully 3000 milliliter and the expiratory that forcefully expel out the air which is called the volume of volume that is for the excel the 1000 ml Residual volume is uh, is the volume of air remaining the air the maximal expiration that is uh, 15 milliliter functional residual capacity it is the volume of the air that is lung end in the end normal expression this vital capacity and the functional residual capacity and total lung capacity these three things is very important and the vital capacity is the most important because the amount of air actually works in our body that is a capacity a true capacity of a lung that helps to perfusion mainly that is vital capacity so the maximum volume of the air that can forcibly inhale exhaled after a maximal inspiration and that is this is tidal volume inspiratory and respiratory reserve so you must remember this very clearly okay the vital capacity so maximum in the maximum exam uh, the examiner will ask you what is the vital capacity of this person with some given values there are some values like uh, inspiratory reserve volume and expiratory reserve volume with residual volume so please measure the vital capacity so that's why you must know the rules okay and the total lung capacity is this kind of things and the first vital capacity that is in the uh, the volume of the air forcefully expelled out that is fbc functional residual capacity total lung volume cannot be measured by spirometry it is one of the important factors so whether you have seen a uh, um, very common feature what look what i can okay so this is the spirometry you must understand the both system this is the uh, tidal volume and this inspiratory reserve volume in this portion that is inspiratory reserve volume so this is the white tidal volume and the inspiratory reserve volume then the expiratory reserve volume here this portion and this is the residual volume this volume cannot be measured in the spirometry so there is no stretch uh, thing and the in these three things uh, that means inspiratory tidal and respiratory this is the vital capacity 
okay you can see the vital capacity here and the inspiratory capacity like this and expiratory capacity like this without tidal volume that is inspiratory capacity and expiratory capacity and the whole portion is total lung capacity. So, I hope it, uh, it is understood. Uh, so, in the in home you have to trace out a spirometry of different individuals. Okay. Now, the this is all about the respiratory system. Now, the endocrine system the parathyroid hormone though endocrine system is not so important, but there are some important hormones which is necessary in the surgical practice like parathyroid hormone and their functions like uh, like pituitary hormones uh, like adrenal gland hormones and some gonadal uh, hormones. So, these are the hormones which is necessary for um, like pancreatic hormone like glucagon insulin these are the things uh, is very important for surgical practice. So, there are some diseases related on it ok. Now, the parathyroid hormone this parathyroid hormone is secreted by the chief cells of the parathyroid hormones of the parathyroid glands and it acts as the increased serum calcium concentration by stimulation of PTH receptor in the kidney and bones. So, these hormones is uh, directly acting on the kidney and bones which helps to increase the serum calcium concentration and the PTH has a plasma half life of 4 minutes ok. So, very small amount of time that uh, it gives some advantages of individuals blood supply ok the bone kidney and intestine. So, in these 3 organs parathyroid hormone can act on in the bone bind with the osteoblast with the signal of osteoclast to cause restoration resorption of the bone and release of calcium and the kidney active reabsorption of calcium and magnesium from the distal convoluted tubule and decreases the reabsorption of phosphate. Intestine via kidney increases the intestinal calcium absorption increasing activity of vitamin D it is indirect function there are two type of function one is direct and another one is indirect. So, direct function is done in the bone that it, it helps to increase the osteoclastic activity by that cause the calcium is uh, resorbed from the or broken down from the bone to the intestine uh, to the extracellular space that is ECF to raise the uh, free calcium ok and the kidney. Um, in case of distal convoluted tubules also proximal or not like that distal ok. So, distal convoluted tubule calcium is reabsorbed ok. It not gives to calcium release, but it helps to reabsorb from the secretion and the intestine that uh, helps to increase calcium reabsorption by indirectly by the help of bit activated vitamin D which is which is also activated in the kidney and that activated vitamin D will helps to increase calcium reabsorption from the gut that is why it is indirect functions. Parathyroid not directly gives intestine to increase calcium, but it also helps to it also gives um, also gives some advantages or it activates uh, vitamin D or uh, helps to maturation of vitamin D to increase calcium level from the intestine by the help of parathyroid hormone. That is why intestine uh, intestinal activity is one kind of indirect function ok. Now, the glucagon, glucagon is a hormonal antagonist of insulin released from alpha cell of isolate of a language of the pancreas, it results in increased plasma glucose level. Glucagon is increased in the protein meal after protein meal and also the starving condition. So, the stimulants what are the stimulations and the inhibitions ok. Stimulants is decreased plasma glucose uh, that is starvation if I say here. prolong starvation ok. 
if mm -hmm. I can say this is prolonged starvation, increased catecholamines, that is uh, epinephrine and non-epinephrine, in case of stressful condition, increased plasma amino acid, that is protein meal. I already told you that if there is uh, increased amount of protein intake, in that case glucagon can be found in the blood. Sympathetic nervous system is uh, same like catecholamines, acetylcholine and cholecystokinin from the adrenal wall. Okay. And the inhibition is somatostatin that is universal inhibitors, we all know that it is in universal inhibitors. Insulin also antagonist, we all know that and increase the free fatty acid and keto acid that means the patient is on ketotic uh, condition, keto, keto condition and the increase urea in case of muscle damage, in case of uh, increase amount of nitrogenous waste product. Now the gastrointestinal secretions, so you must understand the secretion in which organs the increased amount of secretion comes out and the decreased amount of secretion and also the secretion of large amount of electrolyte like, like potassium uh, is secreted more in the saliva and the rectum this kind of things and the water is uh, most reabsorbed in the jejuna this kind of things. Okay. Saliva the 24 hours period and like uh, Okay, so saliva like 115 ml 24 hours and sodium is 10, potassium is 26, chloride is 10 and bicarbonate is 30. Remember this is very enlarged, so that is why saliva secretion is alkaline and the jejunum 3000 a very very increased, Okay, very increased it also 30 that is alkaline rich and the pancreas uh, and the duodenum is 100 to 2000 stomach is uh, 15000 so in the colon chloride potassium is 30 you know i already told you that potassium is large more is secreted in the salivary gland and the colon that is rectum so, regulation of these secretions is depending upon the location. In the saliva, a complex interaction of flow rate, the autonomic nervous system, okay. And the exact position of the sodium potassium regulated by the aldosterone, okay, must be remembered. That is, sodium and potassium level is uh, somehow um, regulated by aldosterone, and the stomach hormones uh, like gastrin play a role in feedback both endocrine and neurologically mediated by vagus in the duodenum cck is released response to duodenal distensions causes conduction of the gallbladder release of bile acid that is cholecystokinin okay it comes from duodenal wall and the helps in the gallbladder contraction release of bile now the pancreatic secretion affected by the somatostatin and secretion is a small bowel affected by osmolarity of luminal content. This part is due to the tightness of the cellular junctions and the in this reason the jejunum is more permeable than IDM. Okay. So, jejunum is more permeable than IDM. The practical implications of that if an individual has an extensive intestinal resection and a high output proximal cytostoma then administration of hypotonic rather than isotonic solution will result worse electrolyte disturbance which it will enter the jejunum. No need, no need that. Now the gastric secretions. So gastric acid is come from parietal cell. pH of gastric is around two, uh, around two pH acidity, and they maintain hydrogen and potassium pump as the process of bicarbonate will secrete into the surrounding vessels. Sodium and chloride are also correctively secreted from parietal wall canaliculus, the state of negative potential across the membrane. Carbonic and hydrous form carbonic acid dissociative hydrogen and dissociation lead to proton pump. Okay, no need. So, this is the parietal cell and in interchromaffin cell will give histamine release and D cell to stomach. We, it, it will give E cell to reduce histamine and that will uh, give stimulation of the parietal cell to, to secret hydrogen and 
that is hydrochloric acid so somatostatin analog or the proton pump inhibitor it helps to reduce the acid level okay and also it also also the stimulation of the g cell uh, that will that is digested protein amino acids and the somatostatin also gives inhibitory function to the g cell okay so there are the in the secretion there are three phases cephalic gastric and the intestinal so 30 percent acid produced by the smell or by looking to the uh, delicious food and the 60 percent for acid produced by the after eating that is distension of stomach and the intestinal phase that is 10 percent purpose of during of intestinal phase okay now the factors increasing produ production include vagal nerve stimulation gastrin release and histamine release okay gastrin release histamine release indirectly endocrine like cell and the factor descending production is a somatostatin cholecystokinin and the secretin so these are the inhibitory second so somatostatin cholecystokinin and secretin these will give inhibitory supply to the stomach to secrete hydrochloric acid and the gastrin okay and the vagus nerve gastrin release and histamine acetylcholine will give increased amount of gastrin so parietal cell secret hydrochloric acid calcium sodium magnesium and intrinsic factor of castel and chief cell produce pepsinogen and the mucosal surface secret mucus and bicarbonate so there are a lot of things in the stomach mucosa uh, kindly you have to go through the notes personally so there are some drugs that uh, that can block different kind of reaction like ACE2 blocker, um, misoprostaglandin -prost analog, uh, like proton pump inhibitor, sucralfate, bismuth, octreotide. So these things are the drugs we use to reduce or control the secretion. <coughs> now the functions and the secretion from which cell? Gastrin from G cell, CCK from I cell secreting from S cell and the VIP somatostatin D cell. So, G cell increase hydrochloric acid pepsin and increasing factor of uh, castle secretion increase gastric motility and trophic action of the gastric mucosa and the I cell increase secretion of enzyme rich fluid from pancreas contraction of gallbladder relaxation of sphincter of OD and decrease gastric empty. S cell uh, that is upper S cell upper intestine increase the secretion of bicarbonate rich fluid from pancreas and the hepatic duct decrease gastric acid dilatation. Gastric acid secretion ok. So, secretin, cholecystokinin, somatostatin these are the inhibitory uh, hormones it, they are controlling the actual gastrin uh, and the hydrochloric acid because if these kind of things increase in our stomach mucosa it will gives gastritis or uh, gastric perforation or uh, gastric increased gastric irritation dyspepsia so this kind of problems will come uh, as a sequelae so uh, naturally so cholecystokinin secretin and the somatostatin these are the hormones that e get inhibitory functions or also can gives negative feedback process ok. Uh, also you can say it is somehow protective function ok. Now the peristalsis is the mechanism of uh, stomach. So, smooth muscle contracts behind the foot bolus and longitudinal muscle propels the foot through the esophagus. So, this, are th this is the mechanism. So, primary peristalsis uh, uh, are like uh, 9 seconds and in the smallest the basal wave slow to few seconds causes a mixture of chyme and in the colon 3 main phase, phase and that is the colonic contraction naming segmentation antiperistaltic contraction and a mass movement. Segmental contraction localized contraction of the bolus subjected to local forces uh, maximize the mucosal absorption like um, if I uh, I can show something mm. 
pastel is always how it look like so we can see here that is proximal portion dilated and distal portion is narrow so uh, uh, this is the peristaltic wave one portion is contracted another one is dilated so this is the peristaltic wave by which the foot bolus is propelled from proximal to distal okay so uh, uh, so this is the way okay let's see to our videos as well okay now the pancreas endocrine physiology so i have already told you and you all know that beta cell insulin and alpha cell glucagon delta cell from somatostatin f cell for pancreatic polypeptide or pp cell same things now the enzymatic action so in 24 hours 1000 to 1500 per ml per uh, uh, 24 hours and ph is 8 like excessively alkaline there are some enzymatic and aqueous secretion enzymatic that is trypsinogen pro uh, pro amylase elastase and the aqueous that is water secretion is sodium bicarbonate water potassium chloride regulation is cephalic and gastric phases are less important in regulative pancreatic secretion must remember cephalic and gastric has less important but the effect of gastric materials in the small bowel uh, stimulates cck release and uh, acetylcholine which stimulate acinar adductor cell okay and the cck is most potent stimulus that is pancreatic secretion is stimulated by the cholecystokinin mainly but there is no other action like cephalic and gastric phase cannot change the pancreatic secretion. But acetylcholine and cholecystokinin can, it will helps to increase pancreatic secretion from their gland to the lumen. Now the renal physiology, the renal physiology uh, that means the kidney, kidney system, the nephron is supplied by the blood and afferent artery open to the glomerular capillary plates blood then flow to the afferent arterial supply to the peritubular capillaries and medulla vasa recta kidney receives 25 percent resting cardiac output so uh, it is highly vascular organ uh, like like 20 25 percent in some uh, textbook like ganon it is called a 23 percent so um, the better is to say within range like 20 to 25 percent. The control of blood flow, the kidney can able to auto regulate the blood flow between the systolic 80 to 180 millimeter of mercury. So, there is a little variation of renal blood flow and it is uh, there is a mechanism like renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. It is the long lasting mechanism of our body which can helps to control the blood pressure for long duration. That is, if uh, someone's kidney is damaged with the uh, CKD, chronic renal failure or acute kidney injury or the diabetic uh, nephropathy, in that case hypertension is eminent. Okay, that is why the doctor somehow says that if a patient is diabetic and is uncontrolled and if there is a chance of nephropathy, in that case blood pressure will raise, okay, no matter what. Uh, the day after tomorrow it will come now the achieved by the myogenic control of areolar tone by both sympathetic input and hormonal signals and renin so the blood flow can be controlled uh, in between 80 to 180 millimeter of mercury so there is a little volume now the glomerular functions and the structures the G GFR is equal to the concentration of solute the urine and the the time of the volume of urine produced by minute divided by plasma concentration and the GFR is 125 ml per minute uh, uh, and the total volume of pl plasma per unit time leaving the capillary entering the Bowman's capsule. So, renal clearance is very much uh, measured by inulin because why? Because it is not uh, reabsorbed and uh, and filtered easily, filtered but not reabsorbed. Is as 
the felt are not reabsorbed okay that's why inulin is usually um, used to measure the renal clearance test so not reabsorbed or secreted in the tubules and the not filtration and plasma not protein bound not reabsorbed or secreted in the tubules and the uh, plasma concentration constant during urine collection so glucose which is freely uh, filtered across the basement membrane is reabsorbed tubular giving the clearance of zero the tubular functions reabsorption of the secretion substance by the tubules is one of the important functions in the proximal tubule substance the glucose amino acid phosphate and co transported by sodium across the semi permeable membrane very very important okay so must remember what are the substances that usually transported glucose amino acid phosphate are co transported by the sodium and the two third of the filter water reabsorbed by proximal convoluted tubule this lead to increase the urea concentration that's why urea is reabsorbed in the pct and also the distal convoluted tubule and the um, para amino hyperic acid pah is used to measure the renal plasma flow okay renal plasma flow which is another important things pah what is the core chemical mediators which helps to increase the um renal plasma flow how to how to measure that is para amino hyperic acid level potassium may be secreted in the reabsorbed in the co exchange sodium now the loop of Henle that is 60 liters water contain 9000 millimol sodium inter descending limb of loop of Henle in 24 hours okay approximately 60 liters of water and the loops of just aglomerular nephrons are run deep to the medulla the osmolarity fluid changes in the greatest at the tip of the papilla and the thin ascending limb of impermeable to water by hardly permeable to sodium and chloride ion this uh, loss means the beginning of the thick ascending loop of hypoosmotic compared with the Adjacent fluid. Now, the thick ascending lip reabsorption of the sodium and chloride ion occurs by the both filtered and the passive diffusion pathways. The loop of Henle are co located within, uh, with the vasa recta. These will have similar solute compositions to the extracellular fluid. So, preventing in the diffusion and sub uh, subsequent removal of the hypertonic fluid. So, loop of Henle where the hypertonic fluid in case of dehydration or in the desert area, uh, mostly urine is concentrated in the loop of Henle level okay, and cause a hypertonic fluid. Now, the renal failure, pre, -verse, pre renal failure versus acute tubular necrosis. So, if in case of acute tubular necrosis, urine sodium is uh, more than 30 and the um, plasma osmolarity less than 1.1 uh, urine plasma ratio less than 8 point specific gravity 1010 so it is very important for exam like in case of acute tubular necrosis what is the specific gravity brown granular cast is found so here is the diagram renal tubular acid affects the renal tubules and result in the hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis with normal gap junctions normal anion gap why because in uh, if you have administered a lot of normal saline that is 0.9 percent sodium chloride that causes hypertonic uh, hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis with the normal serum anion level and the impaired bicarbonate reabsorption highly uh, ph integrated level less than 5.5 hypokalemia and impaired hydrogen ion here even most than 5.5 hypokalemia renal stone okay collecting duct uh, there is a stone type 1 and type 2 so type 2 mainly proximal tubules and type uh, 1 mainly the distal tubules and type uh, 4 hyperkalemic rta decrease the aldosterone level secretion of aldosterone re resistance okay and if aldosterone is decreased in that case more potassium is excreted okay that's why hypokalemia occurs. Now the diuretics, so hydrogen um, diuretics, uh, where this 
diagram is very important ascending lip of lupa family for symmetry lock it is very important and the mechanism of the carrier that is sodium potassium 2 chloride 25 percent of sodium excreted through prosimide by the ascending lip of lupa family and the distal tubules and uh, that is thiazide diuretic sodium chloride carrier between 3 to 5 percent collecting tubules that is pyrrole electron potassium sparing diuretic uh, sodium potassium ATPS pump between 1 to 2 percent okay so must remember this uh, uh, even ascending lip of lupa family is very important in first cases uh, now, uh, so uh, this is the diagram you can see here the filtration carbonic anhydrase inhibitor that is mannitol uh, works in the PCT that is uh, by uh, descending manners water is reabsorbed. Okay. So, water is comes through peritubular area and there is most concentrated then this is solute permeable but no water permeability. So, a more solute sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium is reabsorbed by here. Uh, and the uh, here the prusimide is usually but or the loop diuretics used and here DCT that is uh, in case of calcium reabsorption sodium chloride thiazide diuretics and the potassium screen is collecting tubules by uh, potassium spare with the hydrogen and so most of the hydrogen is excreted in uh, in between hydrogen and potassium pump and sodium is reabsorbed along with potassium kept within the blood vessels. So, hydrogen is washed out. So, acidic iron is acidic uh, urine is uh, produced and here the aldosterone must be blocked. Syndrome of inappropriate ADS secretion uh, it is come out uh, in the uh, post graduation exam as a short note of CR uh, where ADS is secreted but uh, inappropriately in the inappropriate manners like in case of small bowel carcin cancer lung cancer and case of prostate cancer a CR is a, act as a paraneoplastic syndrome ok. Another one is stroke uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage meningitis encephalitis abscess uh, and the tuberculosis pneumonia and there are some drugs like carbamazepine uh, sulfonylurea uh, vincystine cyclophosphamide. So, these are the chemotherapy agent it can uh, it can uh, change the ADH secretion and causes CRT or uh, syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. So, another is a renin, renin is a local hormones which is secreted from the JG cell, juxtaglomerular cells and hydrolyzed angiotensin nogen to produce angiotensin 1. Renin is a substrate which uh, helps to conversion of angiotensin nogen 1 to gen 2 1 because angiotensinogen comes from the liver and that is 85 percent and 15 percent come from peritubular capillaries. Uh, that is why angiotensinogen is produced uh, in the liver and renin helps to uh, come and get as a active form. Factor what factor uh, gives renin stimulation? There is high potential cause a reduced renal perfusion like hypovolemia or hypovolemic shock or road traffic accident or massive blood loss during surgery. In that case renin is stimulated. Another one is hypothermia, sympathetic nerve stimulations, catecholamines and the erect posture. Mm, okay, very important. These are the things which will increase renin secretion and the decrease in like beta blocker NSAID that is why NSAID is not good for our kidney and because NSAID will block the renin system it will also gives uh, blocking of angiotensin 1 to 2 in that case vasoconstriction not occurs vasodilation occurs in that case renal perfusion will be less and the vascular that is blood vessel blood pressure maintenance will be, will also impaired the and renal system also damaged that is acute tubular necrosis. So, here the mechanisms uh, angiotensin will come from the angiotensin 1 then ACE renin il, which will convert angiotensin to 1 and it will uh, turn to 2 by ACE angiotensin converting enzyme from the lung. So, smoking is prohibited why because if you are a smoker ACE will not come as adequately 
in that case angiotensin 2 will not produce sufficiently that is why this process will be impaired that sympathetic activity will less tubular is, uh, sodium chloride potassium secretion will be uh, impaired allosterone secretion is also impaired arterial vasoconstriction and increase in blood pressure will also not functioning and ADH secretion is also uh, deranged in that case collecting system is more hypertonic fluid or concentrated urine formation and adrenalines increased amount of potassium is increased uh, excreted and the blood pressure will not maintain uh, like it will uh, go down or go increased ok. So, these are the things very important for uh, so salt and water retention effectively perfusion of the apparatus increase ok. So, these things is very important because angiotensin 2 is a powerful vasoconstrictor. It will also maintain the blood per, uh, perfused in the kidney system by constricting efferent arteriole. That is why angiotensin 2 is a uh, important chemical mediator for maintaining blood pressure along with some stressful condition. It also gives uh, supply to also gives stimulation to secretion of aldosterone in the mineralocorticoid in the adrenal gland ok. So, very important. So, renal angiotensin system zona glomerulosa that is mineralocorticoid secret aldosterone fasciculata that is cortisol reticularis that is androgen uh, dihydroplanesterone renin that is releases by JG cells of kidney in response to reduce renal perfusion factor stimulating I already told you that angiotensinogen 10 angiotensin ACE lung converted fasciculation lead to raise BP stimulate thirst stimulates aldosterone and ADH. So, angiotensinogen is very important because a powerful vasoconstrictor I already told you that and it uh, it also maintains the fluid and the electrolyte like potassium sodium levels and also maintain the aldosterone secretion level ok. Here uh, raised that retention of sodium in exchange of hydrogen uh, potassium and hydrogen in distal tubules and the general glomerulus in the response to the raised uh, angiotensin 2 and potassium and AC, ACTH level also. So, aldosterone and ADH release is maintained in by the angiotensin or te, uh, angiotensin that is 2 1 to 2 and so is very important as a normal body fluid level and the volume also. <laughs> so, see A1 and A2 ok. So, JG cell release renin uh, it will stimulate energy so 1 uh, from lung ACE A2 a very important powerful ok and these uh, powerful things what done uh, efferent arterial constriction so the forceful GFR or a perfusion occurs um, increase the blood pressure angiotensin 2 also stimulate the adrenal gland. Uh, I already told you that uh, aldosterone angiotensin 2 also gives supply to the mineral corticoid and causes aldosterone secretion. And within the uh, within the kidney aldosterone promotes the reabsorption of sodium and water ok. You can see that aldosterone secretion is also stimulated by angiotensin 2 in the mineralocorticoid and also the circular blood volume increases further raising the blood pressure within the kidney aldosterone promotes the reabsorption of sodium and water ok. So, a this aldosterone will maintain the sodium and potassium level that is salt and water retention maintenance that is the blood volume is restored and blood volume is also raised. So, phases of wound healing that will be discussed in the uh, pathology section and the response of surgeries and others stress response and ok shock and other things. So, this will discussed in the pathology sections ok. 
so that is all about our physiology class so in the next class we will discuss these things like uh, like some pathological conditions that attached with the physiology uh, in the surgical practice like shock uh, like um, incontinence and some stress response to surgery phase of bone healing so that is all about our today's uh, lecture about the physiology i hope you uh, you like my uh, videos and also uh, keep subscribe and like and comment if uh, you need any uh, query regarding the videos and also the subject topics as well so thank you very much for uh, watching uh, my videos and uh, pray for me and also keep continuing to uh, see my videos and also like subscribe and comment okay thank you very much and see your our next videos will come soon thank you very much